My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to worship. Worship is brought to you today by the churches, the Moravian churches at Kilwallin and University Road. I am Livingston Thompson and I'm delighted to welcome uh, leading in worship today members of the Costley family, John Costley, who will lead us in the intercession, Robert Costley and David Costley, who will lead us in the reading of the Word of God, and Derek Woods, who will bring us the message for today. Today, being the Sunday closest to the 1st of March, we are marking the anniversary of the, Morav of the Moravian Church, the Unitas Fratrum. It is true that we should call attention to the founding of the church in 1457 in the Kuntval Valley. That church continuing today as the first and ongoing Protestant church. We give God thanks for the ministry of this church through the ages. And I pray that as we celebrate the anniversary of our church, that we all will be blessed. And tomorrow being the first day of March, we will be having a worldwide unity day of prayer. And you would have received the link for you to be able to join in this time of prayer. And we invite everyone to join in this worldwide unity day of prayer. And now I want to share with you the text for today from the prophet Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 5. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not fear, for I am with you. And then from 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. And now, let's bow heads in prayer. O oh God, we praise you and give you thanks for the faith and vision of the men and women who founded the unity of the brethren and for the Moravian church that we have inherited from them. Grant to us a vision of how we may live to your glory and may be example of their, faith, their faithfulness and fellowship in Christ. Inspire us to renew and deepen the life of your church today. So we pray direct and watch over it so that it may be an instrument of your purposes. Strengthen and support those who suffer for the sake of the gospel. Unite the people of God increase our understanding of the mystery of God. Use us to show every day clearly the glory of your life, death and resurrection. And this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're just joining us, welcome to worship. Brought to you by the University Road and Kilwall and Moravian Churches. I'm Livingston Thompson and now I invite you to join with us in the singing of the first hymn.
When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout the generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Here ends the reading. This reading is taken from Romans chapter 4 verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, Faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not waken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. Here ends the reading. Oh, for a closer walk with God, the calm of sins forgiven, a light to shine upon the road, that leads at last to heaven. O gentle messenger, return, return, O holy dove. I hate the sins that made you mourn and grieved your heart of love. Restore the happiness I knew when first I saw the Lord. Refresh me with the radiant view of Jesus and his word. From every idol I have known, now set my spirit free. Go make me worship you alone and reign supreme in me. So shall my walk be close with God. My wanderings be forgiven, so shall his light mark out the road that leads at last to heaven. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. 
you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Our readings for the second Sunday of Lent focus on salvation. Mark is absolutely clear that we are saved by Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. The story of that salvation starts with God's calling of Abram to be the father of many nations, sealed through the covenant God made with him. It ends with us and our response to God's calling, a call sealed through the new covenant made possible by the Easter Christ. Today's gospel reading from Mark is about Jesus telling his disciples what will happen to him in the future, that he must undergo suffering be rejected, killed, and after three days rise again. Peter told him off for saying this, but then Jesus rebuked Peter, telling him that he was setting his mind on human things rather than divine things. Peter wanted Christ to be king, not the suffering servant prophesied in Isaiah 53. He was ready to receive the glory of following the Messiah, but not the persecution. The Christian life is not a paved road to wealth and ease. It often involves hard work, persecution, deprivation, and deep suffering. Peter saw only part of the picture. Don't repeat this mistake. Instead, focus on that good which God can bring out of apparent evil and the resurrection that follows the crucifixion. Next in the reading comes the famous passage as Jesus tells the crowd, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. As we know, in the following years, the disciples did do this and died for doing so. This is also true of many followers of Christ, down through John Huss, who was burnt at the stake on the 6th of July in 1415. Tomorrow is the 1st of March, which is the day we celebrate and give thanks for the founding of the Moravian Church, or Unitas Fratrum as it was called back in 1457, and which is still the official name of our worldwide unity. Following John Huss's death, 
his followers, staying within the Roman Catholic Church, still tried unsuccessfully to get his reforms done. There were wars with various Hussite groups fighting with each other. Then there came on the scene a man of simple faith called Peter Celtic, who hated war and killing. He said it was always wrong to kill one's enemies and that man's fight was with his inner self. He gathered around him a band of like-minded people. In 1457, they withdrew to a valley called Lititz. There they drew up rules for their brotherhood, which were later to become the discipline of the Brethren's Church. This influenced men like Luther, Erasmus, Calvin, Zinzendorf, and Wesley. Again there was persecution. The brethren were hounded and the Inquisition arrested and tortured members. An edict of banishment was issued and as a result the brethren had to meet in secret in caves and in dens. In spite of persecution their numbers grew and in 1467 it became evident that they must have a church and ministry of their own. Thus, our Moravian church was founded, and we remember this with thanks tomorrow. Also coming up this year on the 21st of June will be the 40th anniversary of the Day of the Blood, when 27 Protestants including 15 members of the Unitas Fratrum, were put to death for their belief. In the following years, many more suffered and died, like the first Moravian missionaries, who were prepared to risk their lives by going to spread the good news to native peoples in hostile lands and environments. They took up their crosses for the sake of the gospel and followed Jesus, as do many more to this day. Many of us give something up for Lent, such as chocolate, biscuits, alcohol, or sometimes take up something new, like reading a special book, spending a few minutes more each day in prayer. Important as these are, it is equally important that these Lenten practices and how well we're doing them do not become our sole focus in themselves. The real purpose is so that we can better discipline ourselves to listen to Jesus and grow in obedience to what Jesus is asking us to do for him. Our Lamb has conquered. Let us follow him. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for your church around the world. May your people be built up in faith and live their lives following Jesus Christ our Lord, especially as we are struggling to meet together because of the pandemic. Help us to play our part in the life of the church throughout the world, through our prayers and by our gifts of money and service during the season of Lent and beyond. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you. Give us a fresh vision that leads to action and strengthen us to serve you in the places where we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for those in positions of authority and leadership, that they do not misuse their powers but respect and care for all their people and for the natural resources of their countries. During our Lenten journey, may we be especially aware of those in our world who are hungry and thirsty and of all who have so little when we have so much. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Father God, we ask you to protect our loved ones, our friends and our neighbours. We pray that during this season of Lent, your Spirit may speak to our friends and relatives who no longer practice their faith, and that they may be inspired to return in certain knowledge of your loving acceptance of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are ill and in pain, longing to live full lives, for those who are sad and hurt, longing for comfort, for those awaiting treatment, for those convalescing, seeing an end to their suffering, and for those whose only relief will come through death. In a moment of quiet, please bring before God anyone in your heart today. May we be able to offer gentle support to those in trouble, sensitive encouragement to those in need, and strength and support to those in weakness. We especially pray for all around the world suffering from coronavirus and those who are caring for them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you for worshipping with us today. And we want to ask God's blessing on us now as we bring the service to a close. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, on this day when we call attention to the founding and the ministry of the Church, the Moravian Church through the years, we ask your blessing on the work of churches worldwide. Watch over all who work for the spread of the kingdom of God. Let your spirit and power inspire their witness by word and deed. Give to bishops and ministers and all those who continue to develop and pass on the faith a true understanding of your word and a Christ-like concern for your people. Guide those who bear office and strengthen all your people for mission to witness and to serve you in love. And this we pray through Jesus Christ, O Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. We would like you to join us again next week Sunday as we have another time in worship. And remember, in terms of the coming week and in activities that we might know, I just want to remind you that tomorrow we, we will be able to join in the uh, worldwide unity day of prayer. You are welcome to take part in the prayer at any time, but you will receive the link so that you may be, log you may be able to log on for the worldwide time to join with others. And then, of course, remember that on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock we'll have our time for Bible study. And then on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. would be our lunchtime prayer. Thank you. Join us again next week. God bless you. Goodbye.